it's June here in the UK, zone 9A. And we've been super busy over the last couple of weeks planting out nearly all of our summer crops. Today, we're gonna show you around and hopefully give you some tips and ideas that you can use for yourself on what we've been growing and what we've been doing. And we're also gonna do a little bit of harvesting as well. It's early June and I'm planting cucumbers into our polytunnel which I sowed about four weeks ago. I grew them in deep root trainer trays and they've established a really nice strong root system already. I'm planting with strings in the hole to train them upwards and I'm adding some manure compost to the top of the planting hole to give them a good boost. Cucumbers need moist soil and plenty of warm sunlight to grow, so keep them well watered to avoid bitterness. Cucumbers can cool the body and the blood, which gave rise to the term cool as a cucumber, needed in the heat we've just had. Remember to harvest your fruits regularly to keep them producing well. Now that I've got these planted, I'm just going to push a nasturtium seed into the hole with the cucumbers, as this is a great companion plant to grow alongside them. And of course, in just a moment, I'll give those seeds a good water to get them going. Not only will the nasturtiums look great growing in here alongside the cucumbers, but they'll also act as a good catch plant, which means that sometimes the insects will go and eat your nasturtiums rather than your cucumbers. And then you can also eat the nasturtium leaves and flowers yourselves in salads. I'm also going to plant a couple of cucumbers outside, just as a comparison to see how they do. I've never had much luck growing cucumbers in the UK before, so hopefully in this sunnier position that I've chosen, they do well this year. We pull the wood chip back first. Take a nice big scoop of compost out and then just deepen the hole using my favorite transplanting trowel. Where these are no dig beds, I literally just need to loosen the soil and pull it back. There's two seeds that have grown on in this one cell, but both plants look really strong. So I'm actually gonna carefully divide these two and plant, plant them in individual holes. I'll give them lots of water because that helps with any stressed plant and hopefully they'll come through just fine. I have divided some others that had grown in this way, which I've already planted in the polytunnel, and so far they're doing great. So nicely deep in the hole. Just push in the loose compost back round. Add back in what I pulled out of the hole originally. And I'll just pop a couple of extra handfuls of our manure compost around the top to freshen up the soil. Firm it down nicely. I'll give these two a really good water. And now I'll pull the wood chips back over, giving a nice mulch cover protecting the soil 
keeping the water in and keeping the weeds down and hopefully we'll get some lovely outdoor grown cucumbers from these plants. I'm surrounded here by this patch of potatoes, none of which we actually planted this season. They're all volunteers that we missed from last year's harvest. But as you can see, they're growing on beautifully and they're just starting to flower. So we'll give them a few more weeks and then we'll see what comes up. This new bed of potatoes is coming along really nicely this year as well. These were from seeds I stored from last year's harvest and planted back in the ground. They're slightly behind uh, some of the volunteer potatoes I showed you earlier, but the difference being, at least we know we started with really healthy, decent sized tubers for this bed. Our food forest is now in its second year and last year we only had a couple of fruits on most of the trees which got eaten by the birds. But this year we're starting to get tons of fruit setting on the trees. It's very exciting times. We were careful to select early, mid and late season varieties of all of our fruit trees for our apples, plums, pears and cherries and they're all pollination partners which will ensure fruit from the early season all the way to the end of the season. It's early morning here at Freedom Forest and I'm hoping to get all of this lovely sweet corn planted up before the sun hits this bed and it gets really hot throughout the day. It's best to plant corn in a block as it's wind pollinated and this will help. I'm also going to plant some pumpkins and squash to meander through the corn and this is a good companion plant and it will also help to suppress the weeds. The spaghetti squash will just grow all in between the corns here and I'm going to tell you more about what we like to do with spaghetti squash in another video. This naughty pup keeps breaking into our growing area. Let's take a look around our main outside growing area. Up on my top bed, the parsnips are growing on beautifully. But this year I'm really, really struggling with carrots. Some of the rows of carrots I've planted now, I've sown up to three times to try and get them growing. And this row here, other than these couple that you may be able to see, I've completely given up on and reseeded it with beetroots just last night. Probably the biggest pest that we have here to deal with is actually the birds. Just nipping at the leaves and then scratching new seeds up or even when the, when the seeds have just germinated they scratch in the wood chip and then rip out the new little plants. If you've seen our previous video, you might remember me saying about the abundance of calendula I was expecting this year. Here it is, growing on, still strong as ever. I've weeded quite a lot of it out already, but I will continue to do so as I need to clear space for other stuff. A great tip for tying up tomatoes, beans and peas is to use old socks or tights that have got holes in or that you've worn through. 
Just snip them into strips and use them as ties. They're soft against the stem of the plant and they allow a little bit of movement too. And it's also another great form of recycling. And don't forget to keep pinching out the side shoots from your tomatoes as well. This will keep them growing nice and straight. These are the sugar snap peas that I sowed in mid-March and they are growing absolutely ferociously now. Um, I'll actually be harvesting the first sugar snap peas today but the other job I also need to do is to give them a little help climbing up these poles so I'll be using the ties that I've made up using old socks or tights to help them along the way. Here's some tomatoes that I've planted outside. They're just companion planted with the garlic, which I will be pulling up very soon. These are my younger sugar snap peas, which I just planted a few days ago. Um, and as you can see, these ones are getting nipped at quite badly by the birds, but hopefully they get their roots in the ground and they will still pull through. I've got three different types of courgettes planted all the way down here. We're going to have an absolute abundance of courgettes this year. stones to look like strawberries and scatter them around our plants. The birds go to peck them first as they are most visible and puts them off. Since doing this we've had a lot more left for us to eat.
we've got heaps of growth and new plants happening in the polytunnel that we'd like to show you. Come and take a look. The cucumbers, which I've only just recently planted, are really getting settled in and starting to establish already and there's definitely some new growth coming on them. We've got gala melons and aubergines. And I have to confess, I haven't grown these from seed. We've got a great little garden centre just down the road here and I just couldn't resist when I saw them there the other day. We've got basil growing on beautifully here. It's a great companion to grow with tomatoes and it's great eaten with tomatoes as well. We planted the majority of these tomatoes out in late April. It's now early June and look at all the lovely growth. We've got lots of flowers and we've got fruits forming on quite a few of them. We've got jalapenos, we've got sweet peppers and we've got scotch bonnet up here which is super hot. You'll also notice we've got lots of marigolds growing in the polytunnel. Not only do they make it look beautiful, but they're a great companion plant for tomatoes. Also, I've snuck in some little borage plants as well. You can eat the borage flowers and they'll also add great colour and biodiversity to our growing area here. Now I'm going to pass you over to Dan to see what he's been growing on the other side. If you watched one of our previous videos, our seed house tour, you would have seen me starting off some of these quite exotic crops I'm about to show you. So either side of me are two varieties of sweet potato. One, Molokai purple, which seems to grow very well and is quite vigorous in our zone 9b climate here. The other side, we have Carolina ruby and Burgard. Here we have a row of Cape gooseberries, which are coming on well. Started these from seed early in the season and they're really starting to pick up pace now. And here's some of the famous and elusive winged or four corner beans, which also I talked about in our seed house tour video. They're starting to grow well now and they're highly anticipated because not only do they provide a tuber crop, but also you can eat the foliage as well as the beans. And the turmeric I sprouted from a rhizome is now growing nicely as well. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more of what we do, plus tons of growing tips and advice, we would love to invite you to like this video and subscribe to our channel. You can do this by clicking on the picture of our faces on the screen now. Peace, Peace and plants! plants.